Today we are in the Fairy Farm Archaeology Lab and we are going to share with you some archaeology tricks of the trade. I'm here with our awesome lab staff, Lauren Jones and Judy Jo Brack, and they're going to show us some of the tricks that they use to identify artifacts. Judy, give me a general idea of how you initially go about identifying the artifacts that come into the lab. Well, we actually use all five senses to identify the materials that artifacts are made of. Lauren, there's obviously a visual component that goes into artifact identification, and I see here that we are surrounded by a wide range of magnification devices. Could you tell me a little bit about how you use them? Right here, I've got a piece of prehistoric ceramic, and I'm going to take a closer look at the material to try and determine what temper it has in it, and that can help us identify the culture that made it. Today, I'm going to use our loop. This is probably the one I use the most, and it has a 10 times ma magnification. I'm seeing a lot of quartz pieces. So it looks like tiny pieces of quartz, which is a local rock, was used as the temper. Judy, you're gonna tell me how you use sound to help you identify artifacts. Yes, sometimes artifacts look very similar and they're difficult to tell apart. And one way you can tell these two different ceramics apart are based on how they sound when you tap them. Okay. This one has a much higher pitch. That's right, it does. And I'm guessing that's why it's a higher fired ceramic. This is a uh, historic English stoneware, and this is a piece of prehistoric ceramic. Correct. Great. Lauren, you're gonna tell me how smell helps you identify artifacts? Absolutely. People have lived at Fairy Farm through the 20th century, mm -hmm. so we get a wide variety of plastics. I brought out three different plastics for us to smell today. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so the first one here, uh, you can give that a sniff. Yeah, I'm not picking up any odors mm -hmm. at all. That's a pretty new plastic. Okay. Some of, a lot of the early plastics, as they degrade or break down, they give off a smell because okay. they're less stable. All right, what do you think that smells like? Right. And I should just rub it just a little bit. To... Mm -hmm. That it kind of smells like tar. Mm -hmm. This is a roofing shingle and they were made with asphalt. That makes sense, okay. And then this is our last one. Ooh, it's like a used motor oil, kind of. Yeah, this is an early plastic called Bakelite and it gives off sort of a motor oil type smell. Lovely. How do you use touch when you're identifying artifacts? Just tap them against your teeth. Okay. Yeah, that's plastic. Yeah, it's a dull mm -hmm. sensation. Not very dense. Mm -hmm. And what you're feeling is the vibration against your teeth. Okay. That one's whiteware, should feel a lot different. Yeah, that's sharp. Higher yeah. density. Mm -hmm. And then the highest is this porcelain. Oh, yeah. It's kind of unpleasant. I saved my favorite test for last, the lick test. And the reason why we lick artifacts is because varying materials have a different porosity and that's the density of the artifact. So for instance, a ceramic that's very low fired has high porosity. And whenever you stick it to your tongue, you'll feel it actually adhere to your tongue. Now I've got a piece of porcelain and this has low porosity, high density, so it shouldn't, in theory, stick to my tongue. Nope. I have a refiner than wear, and it is more porous than porcelain, so it should stick to my tongue a bit. Yep. I have a piece of tin glazed earthenware, and it is even more porous than the refined earthenware, and it should stick to my tongue. I realize that the lick test is a little weird, but it's actually quite handy. And um, there are some protocols with this uh, trick of the trade. Um, for instance, you do not want to lick any artifacts that have been excavated from a privy or outhouse. And it is polite if you're helping somebody identify an artifact for you that you tell them if you've licked the artifact in advance. 